Hey guys, in this video, I'll explain you about the glute transporters with easy mnemonics so that you will not forget and you will not make any mistake uh, after watching this video from this topic. So firstly, uh, let me tell you all the topics that I take in this channel are either the PYQs or the most potential questions. So glute transporters are asked in many ways. They are uh, clinically correlated and they are asked on the factual based questions also. So this is the most important table that you need to know from both biochemistry and physiology before entering into this table let me explain you the transport uh, mechanism guys i'll not go into the detail but i'll just tell you what are the divisions in the transport mechanism you have this passive uh, transport and the active transport right so active transport is the mechanism in which atp is used right and this is the passive in the passive you uh, in the active you again have two divisions which is primary active and secondary active mechanism whereas in the passive you have this diffusion and the carrier mediated passive transport is the facilitated diffusion right so it is facilitated by a carrier so these are the uh, divisions of this transport mechanism in uh, physiology right in this table you have uh, both transports one is secondary active transport and the second is facilitated diffusion right so the secondary active transport the term itself tells that it uses the atp whereas the facilitated diffusion is a passive transport and it does not use atp before entering into the glute uh, transporters, let me tell you few differences between secondary active transport and the facilitated diffusion of the glucose. So secondary active is sodium dependent, right? So secondary is sodium dependent. Glucose co-transport co because both uh, components like sodium and glucose are going together. So it is called as co-transport. And this secondary active transport is single directional. So all the SS, secondary, sodium, single directional, that is unidirectional. When you talk about this facilitated diffusion, so facilitated diffusion is bidirectional, di and bi. So it is bidirectional and it does not use ATP. It is a, a passive process. It is otherwise called as ping pong mechanism because bidirectional. One uh, component goes out and the other component comes inside. So that is bidirectional movement, ping pong mechanism. And this is sodium independent, guys. So this is sodium independent. So these are the differences I wanted you to know between this uh, sodium dependent, that is secondary active transport, and sodium independent, that is facilitated diffusion. Now let us understand the transporter, guys. So, uh, yeah. SGLT1 and SGLT2. So SGLT1 is sodium glucose transporter 1 and SGLT2 is sodium glucose transporter 2. Both functions are absorption of glucose. That is okay. And where it is present. So SGLT1, SGLT1 is present in the intestine. Whereas SGLT2 is present in two organ. That is kidney. Kidney is a paired structure, right? Two. So, SGLT2 is present in the renal tubules. In the renal tubules, you have SGLT1 also. But the main component uh, of small intestine is SGLT1. And renal tubules also has, has SGLT1. And renal tubules, that is tubules, has SGLT2. So, this com uh, completes the sodium, that is secondary active transport. Coming to the facilitated diffusion, which is a passive process, you have uh, many uh, numbers like GLUT1 to GLUT7. Uh, there are GLUT8 and GLUT9 also. They are not much important, but I will tell you at the end. Firstly, GLUT1, right? GLUT1 and GLUT3, both of these are basal glucose uptake, guys. So, remember like GLUT1 and GLUT3. Combine them, you will get B, right? So, GLUT1 and GLUT3 are basal glucose uptake if you remember this point that both are uh, for the basal glucose uptake that means many organs have this GLUT1 and GLUT3 transporters you can easily find what are the major sites of expression of this GLUT see look at here brain placenta kidneys and many other organs is common for both GLUT1 and GLUT3 right so I have written it down for you in order to remember GLUT1, the mnemonic that you have to remember is pure RBC. So pure P is for placenta. In RBC, R is for RBC. B is for brain and blood-brain barrier. And C is for colon and cornea. 
and one more thing that you have to remember is kidney this is common for both glut 1 and glut 3 one important point that you need to remember is in uh, one second yeah in glut 3 you do not have this rbc that is the most important point rbc is only involved only and only involved in glut 1 so, so these are the uh, major uh, sites of expression of GLUT1 and GLUT3. When we discuss about GLUT2 guys, so look at here, GLUT2. GLUT2 is all about the absorption of glucose and the production of insulin process. So from the intestine, if you consider this as the blood vessel and this as the intestine. So from the intestine, the absorption of glucose occurs and it enters into the blood. From there it goes into the liver and it also activates the cells of pancreas right so that these beta cells of pancreas now produces insulin now this insulin acts on the increased level of glucose postprandial glucose in the blood and it causes the decrease in the glucose in the blood that is the mechanism right so whole uh, this overall mechanism has GLUT2 in it so look at here I'll uh, label in the intestine you have GLUT2 in the liver also you have GLUT2 and on the beta cells of pancreas we have GLUT2 so these are the locations of GLUT2 look at here beta cells of pancreas transport out of the intestine see beta cells liver intestine kidney is like uh, coming everywhere guys in glute 1 2 3 everywhere kidney is in so that is not that much important but the point that you need to remember is in glute 3 rbc is not seen and in glute 2 it is all related about this process now that we have discussed about this intestinal absorption here i have got a few uh, small uh, line diagram for you so let me explain that glucose absorption in the intestine guys so what happens is let us consider this is one gi cell one of the cell of the intestine so it has this luminal side the, from here the foot this is the foot tract we are taking the foot it enters into the lumen and the, on the basolateral end you have this blood vessels okay on the basolateral end you have this b for b blood vessels and in the luminal side you have this foot entering so what happens is you are taking glucose or galactose in the form of food that enters into the intestine via first one right i have told you one for i that is small intestine so look at here sglt1 is located in the intestine on the luminal side and there is one more transporter which is present on the luminal side which is glut5 guys so look at here lumen 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we have glut5 whereas on the basolateral b is for word 2 right like uh, number 2 is b so glut 2 is on the basolateral side so it is easy 5 is luminal side 5 letter and glut 2 is basolateral side so let me explain the process now so you are, you are taking glucose and galactose in your food and it co-transports with this sodium via this sglt1 so here you have this sodium and this glucose which has entered the cell now this sodium goes out of the cell into the basolateral into the blood vessels by na plus k plus atps since the atp is used it is the active process here na plus k plus atps is the most uh, important example of active process right so what happens is three sodium goes out and two potassium comes in so this is the mechanism of na plus transport now this glucose is left over it has to enter the blood vessels here via this glut 2 and here for phi you have fructose fructose is transported by glut 5 which is present on the five letter side that is luminal side and it enters this cell and it goes out along with this glucose via the glut 2 so this is the uh, cell of the intestine which has uh, many important transporters that you need to know sglt1 glut 5 glut 2 and primary active transport which is na plus k plus atps pump this that is uh, like this completes the glut 1 2 3 and 5 also for you so 5 is for fructose that is explained right it is present in jejunum and the sperm so for the sperm spermatozoa main nutrition source is this fructose right so that's why 5 is for sperm 5 is for fructose that is done coming to glut 4 this is a most important uh, if you have to remember one thing from this entire table it must be glut 4 guys 
so glut 4 remember it like 4 for t that means dependent and here I have got a, a movie a reference for you so in uh, uh, this Brahmastra movie uh, like Isha is dependent on Shiva right so Isha is four letter word is dependent so now here Isha meaning this is insulin insulin dependent are three organs they are SHA skeletal muscle H is for heart that is cardiac muscle and A is for adipose tissue so it is like Isha is dependent that means insulin dependent is Isha skeletal muscle heart and adipose tissue so that means insulin stimulated glucose uptake is seen do not confuse it with the insulin production insulin production is related to GLUT2 whereas insulin dependent glucose uptake is related with GLUT4 right now GLUT1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are done 6 uh, the function is not that uh, necessary so it's not it is not known and you might not uh, remember also it's like spleen and leukocytes now coming to uh, seventh so glut seven you might either remember it like seven and liver or you can even remember it like liver's endoplasmic reticulum has this glut seven so remember one two three four five six and seven so endoplasmic reticulum is the important word here so liver's endoplasmic reticulum has this GLUT7. So yeah, this completes GLUT7 for you. In the liver, guys, you have two uh, these things, right? GLUT2 is also present. This is present on the normal hepatocyte. Whereas in the hepatocyte, inside the endoplasmic reticulum, you have this, sorry, you have this GLUT7. This completes uh, the table part for you. And here uh, I have... Uh, got you few images so glut 1 is done pure rbc and glut 2 is present in 2 for beta cells of pancreas and you have two kidneys kidneys is coming everywhere and two other organs that is small intestine and liver which are related with this mechanism right so this image is for glut 2 now coming to glut 3 remember like 3 is for tree tree has branches so two structures which have branching in our body are neurons which has this dendritic branches and the placenta which has this blood vessels branching out so that it supplies blood to the fetus right so two structures which are branching which is neuron and placenta this is an important point neuronal glut is glut 3 now coming to the affinity part glut 2 has low affinity and high km so always we know that km is inversely proportional to affinity right so glut 2 you you are eating more food you, like more glucose is entering into the body so that more glucose is detected by the glut 2 in the liver and the uh, pancreas right so low affinity meaning more of the substance should be present for a receptor to sense it whereas when you talk about neurons it should be uh, very uh, sensitive right it should be very active in detecting the glucose like otherwise neuropathy sucker so neurons will detect minute amount of glucose also that means it is having high affinity for glucose so low km that way you can remember which is having low affinity and which is having high affinity as already told there are two other glutes that uh, you might not remember but i'll just tell you glut 8 and glut 9 guys so glut 8 is present in blastocyst and glut 9 is the urate transporter this is given under the extra points so you might skip this part also you, GLUT9 is in for urate transporter. I think uh, this topic is easier now. I have explained everything uh, related to GLUT for you. So, neuronal glucose transporter is GLUT3. They might ask the single line questions from this topic. Neuronal GLUT transporter or the insulin dependent transporter. So, this is dependent, right? GLUT4 is. Whereas, rest all are independent only. From 1 to 9, everything is uh, like independent only yeah this is what i wanted to tell you most important point is glut4 is insulin dependent there is uh, one more point also guys that is uh, insulin uh, dependent glut transporters recently detected ones are the multiples of four like four four twos are eight and four threes are twelve right so this uh, four eight and twelve all these three are uh, insulin dependent from but from this table 
which is uh, only up till this 7 GLUT4 is the only one which is insulin dependent D for 4 Isha is dependent thank you I think uh, in one sheet you can have this uh, summary and please revise this it in the last month of your preparation for INISET. Bye.